Thank you for joining us for Cake News at 4. Today's newscast is going to be a bit different than what you see most days. Today we're putting a deep focus on rental living conditions, especially at one apartment complex with a long history of issues. Emory Gardens is on South Hydraulic in Wichita. In recent months, our Cake News investigators worked hundreds of hours to investigate claims of black mold in apartments, slow response time for repairs, also quick turnarounds for when one renter leaves and another renter moves in without fixing the issues. The key purpose for this hour is not just to shine a light on this particular place to live, but to let everyone who watches understand where they can reach out for help, especially if they don't feel anyone cares. Also, if you find yourself in a property that is hurting your health, where do you turn to get out of a lease? There can be barriers on access to information and advocates to help the very people they strive to serve. We all deserve a clean and safe place to live for our children, for our neighbors, for our city. This is unlivable. Renters are living with mold. mold and insect infestation became public. The bugs crawling on the wall. It's terrible. At Emory Gardens, you can smell the mold. It's just absolutely disgusting. Her apartment was unlivable. I know if there was a plan to address this. It's not safe. The management, the office, the owner, doesn't give a Thank you for watching Cake News at 4. For the past couple of years, we've been telling you and showing you the problems at a local apartment complex, Emory Gardens in southeast Wichita, as we've shown you mold, insects, infestations, damaged units, tenants say management is not doing anything. Cake's Jocelyn Schifferdecker reports on an in-depth look into how we all ended up here. Cake News first stepped into Emory Gardens over a year ago on April 13th, 2023. I mean, you can just, you can smell the mold. Taking a look inside, we found hundreds of bugs, mold on the walls, broken glass, exposed wires, and overall unlivable conditions. The apartments below me in my apartment are completely full of black mold. Uh, my children have gotten sick since I've been here and I'm, just tired of it. Immediately, we reached out to Wichita City leaders to get their thoughts on it. City Council members Brandon Johnson and Mike Hoheisel took a tour with us, shocked by what they saw. Breeding ground for insects, breeding ground for mold. I've seen in multiple apartment complexes. That's just not acceptable and we need to be able to do more about it. We also spoke with Michael Oyster Management at Emory Garden. On April 18th, 2023, he told us over the phone something would be done. We will look in our work orders and regardless, we will contact that person uh, and her unit to deal with whatever issues are in her unit. We thought that was the end, but then in March of 2024, we got another email. Attached was this video. Like end our apartment, it's, it's dripping water yeah. all up in here. And a picture showing her unit was deemed unlivable by the MABCD. It's just absolutely disgusting. The tenant said this was only the latest issue. She put in several work order requests, but says it never got better. For six months, she dealt with these conditions. Mold in every corner, bugs crawling up the walls, and more. We just kept trying to tell them and tell them and tell them, but they just never listened. After tenant Haley Stephan's story aired, the call started once again, with other tenants wanting to share their own what they call nightmares, like this closet full of mold. I know this is getting out of control, so I just... I don't know what else to do. He reached out to maintenance the day after he found it. They said that there's a list of maintenance requests for the whole complex that uh -huh. they will get to my apartment eventually. We reached out to management for both of these stories. And the apartment complex said it responded to all problems in a timely manner, and it says the tenants weren't doing their part to keep the place clean. Once again, we spoke with city and state leaders. State Representative Cindy Howerton telling us she was shocked to see what people were being forced to live in. The bugs crawling on the wall, the water damage, it's it's terrible. She explains under current state law, conditions at Emory Garden falls under local government. But if anyone reached out, she'd be willing to work on a bill that could be introduced next legislative session. We kept tabs on this, even making a trip to the state's capital during a special summer session. Locally, Wichita City Council member Ho Heisel also wants to help renters. We did pass the Landlord Retaliation Act uh, here a couple of months ago. That was to ensure that people can um, report these violations 
and not have fear of retaliation. He expects the council will bring in more quality of life ordinances within the next year, mentioning one specifically that would cover black mold, something he says there's no ordinance for right now. It is dangerous to especially children and disabled people and elderly people. Since seeing our coverage, we've had a former Emory Garden maintenance worker come forward, saying after his daughter got sick, he wants to show what really goes on behind the scenes. The thermostats were a common thing. It was the most common thing I replaced there. Almost daily, I'd go at least two of them because of so, cockroaches and bugs and different things of that sort. Jocelyn Shifferdecker, Cake News on your side. And later in this newscast, we'll have the full interview with that whistleblower about what goes on behind the scenes from an employee's vantage point at Emory Gardens. And we have Cake team coverage. Cake senior political reporter Pilar Pedraza met with state lawmakers to find out what policies, if any, are in place to protect tenants. And I also talk with a lawyer about what you can do if you find yourself in a situation like we just saw. Again, think about if you had to live in that place is like not this. a habitable premises. At Embry Gardens, you can smell the mold. It's just absolutely disgusting. To know if there was a plan to address Her this. Her apartment was unlivable. It's not safe. We've taken you inside the moldy, falling apart, rotten apartments. We've shown you the holes in the law that the city council and county health departments say keep them from doing anything about it. So what can you do? Cake senior political reporter Pilar Pedraza joins us with some answers. Pilar. Chris, the last change made to state law regarding landlords and tenants was more than 20 years ago, back in 2003. The law banning landlords from retaliating against tenants for making complaints goes all the way back to 1975. The ones responsible for any updates, they work in Topeka three months out of the year. As the Kansas legislature was wrapping up its 2024 session, we took your questions about apartment health codes to the state house. Only one of several lawmakers we asked to speak with agreed to sit down with us, Representative Casey O'Habasum of Wichita. Oh. Yes. Okay. We showed him the video from the Emory Gardens apartments. So we'll just do that. Yes. Do you have any reaction to anything that you saw there? Very surprising. Very surprising that we have um, residential buildings like this. And you have... Uh, citizens and residents of our community living in places like this or even close to places like this. Uh, that's some thick mold over there. If you live over here and you have kids and they're running around and you know how kids do, what happens if a kid comes in here and they fall down into this stuff? As we've done these stories over the last year or more, every agency we talked to, from the city council to KDHE, everyone said the law doesn't let them do anything about the problem. Well, and that's something that if there's something that we have to do on the state level with respect to KDHE, you know, stepping in, uh, that's something that we need to look at on the legislative side. And lawmakers were voting to override the governor's veto of Bain's law, creating harsher penalties for harming police animals after the death of Sedgwick County K-9 Bain just six months earlier. Actually, it's now a felony. Uh, it, it's it's going to get jail time, mandatory jail time. We asked Ohibison. Does somebody have to die for change to happen? <sighs> I don't want to say if someone has to die, we don't, we don't, we, I don't want anyone to die. But of course, all bills have, in my opinion, should have the same priority. But Ohibison points out it only takes one lawmaker to at least introduce an idea or spending money on lobbyists. Prime example is this chief's bill. Even as we were talking with Ohibison, a brand new bill to lure the chiefs, maybe even the royals to Kansas, was making lightning speed progress through the legislative system. It's just important to send a very positive message to the sports community that we're here uh, and we're very serious about this. While here at Cake News, the Emory Gardens apartment mold infestation was a story already almost a year old. It looks like more than, what, 30 to 40 lobbyists were hired. You know, so that's huge. <laughs> that was huge. I mean, uh, I've never seen I've never seen that much emphasis, you know, just on that particular particular um, issue alone. Look, we're going to do everything we can to keep the Royals, Kansas City Chiefs, and the state of Missouri. It was great to hear from the governor because the thing is, this requires a team effort. He was just here to uh, find a plan to keep both teams in Missouri. Imagine what you could have done if this particular issue of moles in residential areas or commercials and somebody, you know, was able to gather 40 to 50 lobbyists all at once.
While folks who live in apartments like Emory Gardens generally can't afford to hire lobbyists, they can write to and call state lawmakers. And I've heard this from plenty of lawmakers. When enough members of the public start reaching out like that, they start paying attention and things start happening in Topeka. Pilar Pedraza, Cake News, on your side. Thanks, Pilar. Council member Brandon Johnson knows firsthand the conditions at Emory Gardens after touring and being exposed to the unlivable conditions in April of last year. He said this. Our staff has known that there are a lot of problems out there and they're frustrated that they can't do more as well. So our goal as elected is to make sure we give them the tools to be able to do something about it so that they don't have to see the horror stories I've seen in multiple apartment complexes. That's just not acceptable and we need to be able to do more about it. Cake News brought City Council member Mike Hoheisel to see the conditions of Emory Gardens earlier this year. We caught up with him this week and he told us his plans and the action they are taking now. To be completely honest, with the exception of Section 8 housing, our hands are pretty tied. We either have to have permission from the landlord or the tenant to come in and inspect an individual unit. We can suspect that surrounding units have the same issues, uh, but we have no way of getting into those units to inspect those as well. So that's one of the changes we're going to be um, talking to the state about and talking to our colleagues on county as well as to what changes we can come up with. What makes dealing with slumlords difficult? Well, sl slumlords have gamed the system. They know the ins and outs. They know how to um, parse and maneuver through some of the violations. Um, we have an issue with uh, people switching properties, putting a property into somebody else's name through a rent to own process. And once you do that, it's like the slate's wiped clean. The fact that we cannot get into other units, even though we know that there are violations going on, um, that's another loophole that they have as well. And just the implication which many of the landlords have of using scare tactics to suppress um, their tenants from reaching out to us with violations to bring us in for inspections. I would say that's the number one issue that they have, the number one loophole. We brought you and Councilmember Johnson to go see the inside of some of the units at Emory Gardens. Did you know or were you aware of the extent of how bad the conditions were before? I, I was unaware of how bad it got in there. Uh, we hear all the time about conditions in various uh, dwelling units, apartment units, uh, housing developments and whatnot. So it, it's really striking when you see it with your own eyes, just how bad it can get. And as Cake's senior political reporter Pilar Pedraza also reports, the council took a lot of the ideas to state lawmakers, but they're also still looking at changes on the local level as well. That is a ceiling. Every black dot you see is black mold. It gets worse than that. From photos snapped inside unlivable apartments to cake news reports. For those who live at Emory Gardens, it may seem like nothing much is happening right now. Wichita City Councilman Brandon Johnson and Mike Hoheisel took state lawmakers on a graphic tour this week of the problems Wichita faces with unresponsive landlords and slumlords. They laid out the difficulties the city is having enforcing the health and even fire codes it has for apartments. And I have no um, authority to look anywhere other than where I am granted access by either the landlord or a tenant or uh, is a public commons area. That often slows us down to the point that it's too late for the tenants. Restaurants, bars, nightclubs, those type of venues, event centers uh, come with an annual inspection by the fire department. Uh, apartment buildings do not. In 2016, the state made it illegal for cities to operate regular inspections, something the Wichita leaders are hoping to see altered rather than eliminated, perhaps with inspections based on complaints and perhaps allowing residents with problem landlords a way to withhold rent, which is currently illegal. Councilman black Brandon Johnson shared the story of a she woman who made money. five trips to the ER because of black mold and had a one-year-old suffering health problems too. She spent her rent money on a hotel room to get out of danger. She broke the law by not paying rent, but the black mold in the apartment complex was a threat to her health and that didn't matter to the property managers. Something they say that often allows landlords to get rid of complainers without running afoul of anti-retaliation laws. We also have um, some ordinances coming out here, some international codes that we're going to pull into our city ordinances just to make things a little clearer. Um, so we are working through a process to improve this locally as well. 
Pilar Pedraza, Cake News, on your side. What is something that the public is not understanding about the situation? The management, the office, the owner doesn't give a shit. A former Emory Gardens maintenance worker is coming forward for the first time. He says both he and his daughter have gotten sick from living there. And now he wants the public to know what really goes on at Emory Gardens. Kicks Jocelyn Schifferdecker takes us inside. For months and months, we received dozens of comments and messages on the conditions at Emory Gardens in response to our coverage. The apartments below me in my apartment are completely full of black mold. It's just not a good situation to live in at all. It's not safe. Like at any given time, this can get extremely out of control and people could die. The problems seem to continue for over a year. Then we got a call from someone close to the situation. I'm a plumber and HVAC tra by trade, so like, that's what I did as a career. And I also have been a maintenance man before. So like, I went to school for HVAC, that's why I do HVAC now. A former maintenance worker of the apartment complex fed up with the situation. He agreed to speak with us if we kept his identity hidden. He has firsthand knowledge of the practices at Emory Garden from his time working there. From the neglectful management to the ongoing issues like these that are just left in the apartment. He says the contents in this big box will show it all. Here's the proof, here's the picture, here's the evidence. A weekend maintenance said they will come look at it and there's no weekend, there's no on-call or weekend maintenance. Cake News met with him in spring of 2024. We asked why he decided to come forward now since it seems the issues have been going on for years. He told us he lives at Emory Gardens and was dealing with the same issues we'd been reporting. This has been since January. I've had mold growing in my apartment and I brought it to their attention on repeated bases at least, I want to say at least a couple dozen times. And I was laughed. It was pretty much laughed off. He says he was frustrated management just brushed it off. He knows it's risky to be the one who comes forward. Everybody's scared to be a whistleblower. Everybody's scared to be the one to raise the flag. Because once you do that, now you're, you've been ostracized. But when his daughter got sick, he felt like he needed to share. The moment my daughter coughed into her hand and pulled out, it was black, thing, it was black. She has an autoimmune disorder. Like my daughter could die from that. And he himself is battling cancer. Living with mold isn't helping. I'm getting sicker, she's getting sick now, and that's what, that, I can't have that, I won't let that happen. He walked us through how the maintenance request system works, saying employees are taught to ignore issues. The blinders are on. If I'm here for this, if I'm here to fix your sink, I'm not looking at the rest of your home. I don't care about that, it's not my business. I'm here to fix your sink. Same kind of concept, like if I'm here to fix your HVAC work, I'm not looking at what you have over in your kitchen or going on in your bathroom. I'm here to go straight to your, your mechanical closet, take a look at it, and then go from there with my job and that's all they're looking at. He told Cake News that because of our continuous coverage and pressure, Emory Gardens did make a slight change. It put up a new management sign, but he says it's just for show. Uh, the same company has been there since I started the first time. I've seen the same companies as far as exterminators. And like, yeah, he has a new management sign hung up right now. And they, he's the same manager it's been. And came from a different company, which is also known for it's less than ideal practices. The main thing he wants the public to know about how Emory Gardens is run, he says management is selfish and leaves the tenants fighting for themselves. Nobody cares. Like, other than the tenants, the management, the office, the owner doesn't give a shit. The owner's only care is to try and get a bank loan off that property to go buy another property like everybody else does in this business. Jocelyn Schifferdecker, Cake News on your side. So to come, I talk with an attorney about what you can do if you find yourself in situations like you're seeing right here. At Emory Gardens, you can smell the mold. It's just absolutely disgusting. Good to know if there was a plan to address Her this. Her apartment was unlivable. It's not safe. Welcome back. If you're just joining us here, we've been covering the living conditions at Emory Gardens, a South Wichita apartment complex on hydraulic. It's been riddled with tenant complaints of unsafe living conditions. Here to talk with us right now about what rights you would have as a tenant if you ever find yourself in a situation like this is Randy Rathbun, an attorney in the state of Kansas who represents the rights of people in environmental and toxic exposure litigation. Randy, thanks for taking some time to join us. And you bet. Take us through your background on this, what you've been covering for decades, and the types of cases that you do see. Uh, I started out doing a, a case involving a leaking hazardous waste site here around Wichita. And in the 90s, I started doing some mold cases. 
And for this, so these can require lots of documentation, oh, yeah. lots of witnesses to come through. And expert witnesses. And probably a lack of cooperation, I would imagine, from property owners or landlords. No, that's not right. No cooperation. Okay, no cooperation. <laughs> yeah. Cake News has been receiving plenty of emails, lots of phone calls from some of the people who live at Emory Gardens in Wichita, and they've all been offering concerns, a range from insects, ceilings falling apart, but also concerns about black mold. We'll start by seeing some of the video that we've captured from inside of some of these units. And when you take a look at some of these, and again, this is part of our own investigations here, where you just kind of get a sense of what the living conditions are. And it doesn't matter, it shouldn't matter whatever you're paying, wherever you're living. People deserve a safe place, a healthy place. All landlords have an obligation to have a habitable premises. And there's an implied warranty. And if you don't have that, then, you know, it's against the law. Mm -hmm. And when we see this, a lot of people might think, well, this might be coming from one certain place, but again, think about if you had to live in <laughs> that a place That is like not this. a habitable premises. Our most recent complaint was from a former employee at Emory Gardens who was also a tenant, and they described what it was like to see behind the scenes, if you will. After moving, it did not take long for them to realize this was a bad situation. Take a listen. Uh, it was brought to my attention within the first couple of days. People were bringing it to my attention. Yeah, tenants started bringing it all to my attention from the word go. It started, like, the, the water issue started about two, three weeks after I signed my lease and moved in and it just was ignored after that. Now, Randy, when you hear a situation like that, and this is coming from somebody who worked with that facility inside of that property, but also was a tenant, so you can hear it from both ways on this. And is this a case where, when you're coming across some of these neglect cases where attention isn't paid in a prompt fashion and tenants can be stuck in a lurch? It's not, and as a practical matter, the landlord better hope that that employee never gets involved in one of these cases because it would be tough. Let's hear from that whistleblower again. Uh, they tried to move people in as fast as possible. Like my unit was, uh, they literally vacated and because the people that bought, rented it never moved, actually moved in to put their things in there. But they had issues where they weren't moving in because this or that. And then finally they got it all fixed and they said, I don't want to cancel their lease. I moved in two days after their things were removed into my unit. Um, nobody cleaned it, nobody did anything. Like it was still, there was still trash on the floor from them moving out of their things. And I've seen them put people in a unit, they get them out on eviction on a Friday and by the next, like by the next Friday or next Monday, or following Monday after that, it'd be someone in it. They roll paint on the walls as fast as possible and then put somebody else in it. And Randy has a real sense of trying to turn over a place that sure. quickly. Yeah. Uh, but if you've got substantial health concerns or hazards inside of a place, this requires a lot longer than a couple of days in general. You can't do it. You've got to have an inspection. Then you've got to have a remediation company come in and take care of it. And then you've got to have a clearance inspection. So, I mean, it's a two-week process. And the problem is people move their stuff in and it becomes contaminated from mold amplification and they're stuck. So to really close this, again with Randy Rathman, who covers a lot of this, you've been doing this for decades, what can people do when they find themselves in a spot like this? Because a lot of times if you sign a lease and you have to wind up living there, it's hard to really break out or get out of that lease. Absolutely. What can somebody do? And this is the problem that perhaps with 90% of the people that call me, they haven't gone to their physician. If their physician says you need to get out of there, you can get them out easily because most landlords won't even fight about that. And they don't want to have to deal with that no. because that could, especially if you have Absolutely. a large volume of places. Absolutely. That's something that maybe people should really have to, uh, to know, but it can also be tough to get people there because you could have healthcare access, so many other barriers that could be out there too. But to, to be able to go into court and get out of a lease, you need to go see your doc. So Randy, thank you so much for your time on this. We appreciate it Absolutely. greatly, really, because this is something that I think a lot of people, you can think about places that might be unlivable, but uh, unless you actually see it, and have to handle it and figure out whatever the next steps are, it can be full of questions for so many people. Thank you again. You bet, absolutely. At Embry Gardens, you can smell the mold. It's just absolutely disgusting. Good to know if there was a plan to address Her this. Her apartment was unlivable. It's not safe. We had to move our grandmother out of her apartment. There were mice drippings, mold, just absolutely horrible. Unsure if this played a part in her now having to use oxygen 24 hours a day. My daughter never had her AC fixed, so they gave a 14 to 30 notice. Still nothing, so they had to move out next week. That place needs to be torn down. I had so much black mold when I lived there that me and my four kids were nonstop sick. I paid my rent on time and nothing. They tore down a wall and replaced it in the kitchen, but the flooding kept happening. I mean, what was the point? All the new walls and cabinets got soaked and damaged within a week. So finally, I moved. And guess what? We started getting better.
This highlights just a few of the dozens and dozens of messages you sent us about Emory Gardens. We took them from social media, cake.com, calls to the cake on your side hotline, even in the mail, messages about low living standards. It's not just Emory Gardens, but many other places in Sedgwick County and beyond. All places that make you wonder, would you want a loved one, say an aging parent or a young parent to even live here? We traveled to Topeka to talk to lawmakers. We talked to lawyers. We contacted housing authorities, obtained inspection checklists. We've held your local leaders accountable and they're at the state capitol talking about this very issue right now. We lit the flame and we are putting feet to the fire. People are doing their part. They pay their rent. They go to work. They pay their bills on time and they try to carve out whatever the American dream is to them. It's a different dream for each one of us and all they want is a decent place to live. We hear the frustration. We hear you. Some say the Landlord Tenant Act probably needs work. The name of ownership on these properties keeps changing, but the problems remain the same. Cake News is on your side. If you know of a place or people living like this, keep reaching out to us. We will keep holding people accountable. Everyone deserves a decent place to live. It should not be unlivable. Call us, message us, email us, write us. We are here to listen. We're also here to follow up because this is our home too. Thank you for watching Cake News at 4. We hope you enjoyed the special. Again, if you know of an apartment with unlivable conditions, email us at investigatesatcake.com or you can call us 855-OYS-CAKE. That's 855-697-5253. If you missed the special, you can watch it anytime. Cake.com slash unlivable. Thank you again for joining us for Cake News at 4. As Cake News at 5 starts right now.